uh, uh, how 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 are you to talk about your uh, things maybe in the later after this Okay. Yeah, if we have time this, otherwise we'll do next the Thursday, okay? Okay. I mean this Thursday. Okay. <laughs> Thursday, Thursday oh. So guys, if you had a little chance to read what is a uh, object-oriented programming, it is a uh, PHP did not had object-oriented uh, orientation before uh, since uh, PHP five uh, was lacking of this. And object-oriented uh, programming is a concept that's the final frontier, the last frontier of programming I mean we haven't met anything after that because there's no need for it things that people have been struggling uh, to to come up with something that is um, not need re recreation uh, is in considering all the proposed facts uh, are implemented in object-oriented programming. So most of this major programming, as they have different priorities, the first one is as a spaghetti programming, and then obviously come procedure, you write everything in a procedure, and then you move to object-oriented programming. <clears throat> it's more secure, no doubt about it, one word if I can sum up it. Uh, it's secure through different techniques, extendable, this is another option. It's very extensible, uh, very extensible. You can extend it to to a limited manner. It's reliable. Uh, it works. It's binary procedure after compilation works smoothly, without fault. It takes advantage of uh, something called multitasking, multi-threaded programming. So it can take advantage of all of these things. There are many con concrete concepts around it, like classes, objects, polymorphism, uh, encapsulation, extensions. But these are big, big word, and it, it has reason. Abstraction, static, uh, interfaces, goes on. Uh, most of your web application, application are actually final. They built either a mix of uh, object-rendered programming plus the procedural programming that you're doing. Uh, some of the framework only purely uh, object-oriented programming. Now, of course, object-oriented programming is a massive area to explore for us. We just want to focus on what is a class, how can I use one, uh, when do I use them. Uh, even if I am doing a, a framework like MPC, like Code Igniter or Laravel or things like that, they are built on object-oriented concepts. On top of object-oriented concepts, there are frameworks built on this concept. These the, these are called uh, different, different, like for example, MBC, Model View Control. And at the moment, the one you're seeing, even though it's a procedural, but I tend to do it with um, MV structure without the controller. So what is MV structure? All the pages that you see, these are views, client sees them. Our data model is a good example of uh, um, model. Uh, that's why I call it model. So you're not very uh, completely unfamiliar with the concept of model. So I put all the database related function into one single file called data model. And then all these views, pages, using it, uh, those functions. This concept can be even extended to something called controller. But obviously, before we go even that far, I will at uh, some point maybe show you how it is. Uh, we need to understand what is the object-oriented, why it's so popular. So there are the things, object-oriented programming is faster and easier to execute. And this has been proven by everybody anyway, all programming. It's way more faster. If you, if you have uh, achieved it properly, this is a really good, uh, faster way. Um, OOP provides a clear structure for program, program. So it's always follow one methodical pro approach. So everybody, no, no, no matter which programming language that person is coming from, whether it's coming from Java, C++, PHP, Angular, they, they all can follow that procedure because it this, this, this follows the same concept, same method. It's the syntax is slightly different. Same again with others. The concept is same. Uh, we also see that uh, JavaScript, which is the official language for uh, HTML5, 
was an object oriented. Uh, year six uh, class has been introduced. As you can see, how much demand it, and that's that's the that was one of the lacking behind the object um, JavaScript. So year six has no other options than to go with object orientation. And as you know, JavaScript is not object oriented; it is object based so far, because there was no concept of a custom class, the class that you can make. Uh, is you can only use the one already made for you, and this prototype, and you can't change anything other than whatever given it to you. Uh, can't extend it, uh, something like that. For example, you can't extend the date classes, so you have to use them however they come. That's why it's called object based, and that was one of the problem that we we're facing JavaScript programmer behind. So in that case, ES six introduced a class concept which allows you to create your custom class. A class is a business model which hides, which is purpose. It's also look like a function. A, 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 a function has a purpose. Uh, get total, for example, of shopping cart is a function. Its job is to make the total. Calculate VAT, for example, how big and small they are, they have a specific reason. A class also similar yeah, class. Mm -hmm. in a way. It's also focus to solve one problem. For example, our file system, file uploading system, you can convert that into a class. Uh, so yeah, you can reuse it again thing. and again. <clears throat> the OOPS helps to keep the PHP code dry, After do not repeat yourself. Because if you create a class, a keep a code bar. you can extend to create subclass by adding new feature to it. Money, money exchange so this, this is not possible at all in yeah. a procedural which is possible in object oriented. So if you have a but class, to button, class, say, class say, that's uh, by compiling that class, you get a nice button, a basic button. Yeah, of course, I'm this button is, class, doesn't I'm have I'm any shadows, class maybe doesn't have any shadows, maybe doesn't have any looks that ah, you okay. wanted. Maybe it doesn't have any function. When you click, it doesn't do anything. So you can create your own buttons, but of course, you don't have to do everything, the coordination, the size, width, height, again, you can just grab that button class, extend it, create a child class, and then add those features to it. So you can all have their own flavors from one concept. And this way, over the period of time, uh, class are built, built, extended, added new feature added. You can continue doing this, so you don't have to do it all from the beginning. That makes it do not repeat yourself. OOPS makes it possible to create full a reusable application, a full reusable application with less code and shorter development time. Reusable application, once you create one and it's been tested properly, you can use it for any other programs. It just it makes this more modular approach, a component approach rather than thinking of a whole. Because if you look at this, many of these applications uses many of the common things like file upload could be everywhere uh, maybe doing uh, an update of a product table could be in many cases it doesn't have to be a product table but the other so you have a class that can do that job for you <clears throat> um, the, the do not repeat yourself principle is about reducing the repetition of code you should extract out um, the code that are common for the application. I just, just said a few minutes ago, the many of the applications use similar common features and you can extract that and add it to your new function and place them at a single place and use them instead of repeating it. So once you write a concrete class that does this job, maybe a class that creates a PDF file for you, a receipt PDF, it's job only to do that. You can use it in any way you like. So uh, a class is seen as a recipe. Basically, classes, classes and objects are the two main aspect of object-oriented programming. So <clears throat> a class is a recipe, what makes, and objects are the result of it. So objects are the real thing. Class is a conceptual thing. So as you can see, if you have a the recipe for different types of, let's say you make different types of goulash or different type of soups, 
making soup is a, is a concept. It is a, is a recipe. However, you can make uh, following the same concept, but just changing the ingredient. You could make different types of soup. You could have chicken sweet corn soup. You could have a, a you know, what not what a mushroom chicken soup. You could have vegetable soup. You could have just change the ingredient. The concept of making the uh, uh, soup is uh, written in that recipe. But when you make, you can, by following that recipe, you can make hundreds of different objects, which are then become the real object, real thing. So as you can see, there is one example given. You can have a fruit class. The basic concept of to be a fruit is different than the basic com concept of to be a flower. So when you identify those basic thing about when you can call something as a fruit, not flowers, then you pack them into one class. And from so if you look at into any of these fruits, they have something in common to be called identified as a fruit. Does it make sense? Uh, yes. <laughs> There's a pause. Yes. <laughs> Tell me what is the first. We'll see an example. It will make sense. But think like this: Are we not all animals? Can we call we are part of the animal class? Yeah. Will that belong? Of course. Uh, what makes an animal? Give me the basic concept to be an animal, or, or, or a living being. If animal sounds bad, is <laughs> living being. What makes it an animal? If you think carefully, what it must have in order to, it's not a plant. A breed. A breed, of course, that's the key thing we need. Uh, it consumes. It consumes. Um, that's Brain. another one. Sorry? Brain. Oh no, we're going to go that far here. Yeah. Many okay. animals. <laughs> <laughs> we don't use it. We don't use it. <laughs> Just the foundation. At the beginning of humanity, when obviously beginning of the animal thing, the multicellular organism, think about what without it cannot survive, or what is the, it purpose when it survive? Uh, could be, yeah. Why not a body? Think even more. Think even harder. Eh? Uh, breathing is definitely locomotion. It it does move, right? It can some way move. Uh, locomotion, but you, you make yourself move if you have no legs or anything. But you take some technique, you follow some technique, maybe you float yourself, yourself in the water to move, or in the, you don't know. So, it, it, some sorts of things that is mandatory that does my scenario. You know? So, yes, it breathes, it moves, it's, it has a locomotion, it eats, consumes, right? As, um, uh, 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 Julia just said any animal would consume without that, you know, living being cannot survive. Uh, it, it also, you know, extract, obviously, it had to eat, it had to, you know, recycle it. That's a common one way or other. It, it does, uh, it, it, it production it is, is, is it continues its growth through new generation. Um, you know, it, 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 one of the, one of the key elements of uh, this before we become modern. I decided not to, whatever, but it does. This is its instinct, natural instinct that it's tried to create its generation. That's everywhere. So if you even think those, it probably make noises. I'm not sure if they all does noise, some sorts of, uh, it's probably produce some sorts of noise. We call them, we are talking of maybe for them is more of a, Either some sort of noise is, can produce, maybe. Um, stuff like this. See, if this is all animal, then again, we have different, different from there. If this is the mother of all class, uh, we have different animals, including the humans. Are full, and then obviously, we have body bread, we, we have mammals. classes, okay, mammals who, who give them um, birth, uh, uh, some are uh, reptiles. We have, you know, then again, Obviously, we have created subclasses, perhaps, from the main animal class. We call vertebrates, we call mammals, we call uh, arthropods, we call uh, 
not uh, insects. Uh, insects, yes, that's correct. So we have subclasses now. So these classes, they, they are subclasses, they are not objects. Think about it. When you can call it an object. And when still you can call it a class. So from animal class, we create a subclass of this group of animals based on certain uh, as, um, what do you call it? Specialization. So what you saw earlier as a, uh, a typical animal that it, it has basic um, features. It eats its locomotion. It is uh, it extracts. It's, it's, it produces new generations and or breed. Uh, you know, it's, uh, these are the basic. And then you have some specialization. So the previous one was generalization. That's what we call generalization. And then if you find a specialization, you decided, oh, there are a group of things I can, uh, you know, specialized on a certain thing that other can't uh, or, or do things differently. So in that case, you create a subclass of this uh, species, this different, different uh, genre of species uh, based on a certain must have, not must have uh, feature. And then again, if uh, we are mammals, then of course, I am an object of that map subclass, and my uh, grand class would be the, the animal itself. So, because I already, I also do locomotion, I also eat, I also inherited everything that a mammal, uh, an animal does. But we we have a difference than others because we, you know, the mammals uh, produce children uh, than than laying eggs like a reptile. So still we are in the second class, and I am a representative of that subclass of mammal. Now I am an object. I'm a physical thing of that concept. So this is more clear, right? Bit, bit more clear. Same goes for other things as well. As you can see, second example is a car. The concept of a car is different than a concept of an aeroplane. What makes a car a basic form? Foundation. What what is the basic foundation makes a car a car? Of course, we have different, you know, uh, cars, so two doors, four doors, limousines, and God knows what. They, again, there is a subclass, a sports car, for example. A normal class may not have that aerodynamics, which is a sports car habit. So that's sports car again, but it's a subclass which is specialized on something. The other door. So what is the generalization? And one is a specialized. Sometimes you may not have any specialization, and you just straight use that class. For example, in here is a car, so you have different types of car. Uh, the concept of a car is if you think there are plenty other things, but if you think is oh, it should have a wheel, it should have a, um, you know doors for doors. Maybe it should have uh, some sort of accelerator that then is accelerated brakes, it turns, stuff like this. And then obviously you have other objects although there is no subclass on this one it's just directly child of this class with their own specialization which inherits everything from the class plus yeah basically this is it so that's pretty much a class let's have an example of uh, this concept uh, hopefully we can see an example here as i said is it is a recipe or a template for objects and an object is an instance of class so you will be hearing some new word like instance for example instance is a representative of that template okay so you, you have a recipe of uh, curries sectional curries and then of course you have a chicken curry so chicken curry is a representative of the curry if you have vegetable curry of course it is also a representative of a concept called curry because people make curry with a certain thing and that's why it makes it curry not a fried thing so a instance another name of object is instance and a representative and you presented a representative of that class which you present them so uh, let's assume we have a class named fruit a fruit can have properties like name color weight etc we can define variable like name color and weight to hold the values of these properties when the individual objects uh, apple banana are created they inherit all the properties and behavior from the class 
but each object will have different values for their properties. For example, color. In this case, uh, they, they all should have color because fruits have color. Uh, but then banana has a different color than others. They have different properties, uh, values. Property could be similar, but the values are different different values for each property. So color itself a property. But what color, that's a value. So they all have the same same common properties like color. That's a property. But what value they will have their individual their individuality more. Uh, they have a vivid different colors. So that's a value. Now when we talk about properties, these are the stat these are some sorts of uh, variable we think like a variable the color blue that's it blueberry that that's a that's a just a variable one single value goes in here they also have behaviors which is called functions a, a fruits uh, right so that's a function okay certain they, they, they write so the car also have behavior other than doors and windows has accelerates so that's a behavior so a object is a combination of both some static some some properties the straight linear properties like color weight name and some behavior that we have we also human also have the behavior if you think about animal again animal may have some sorts of locomotive organs but then the locomotion itself is a behavior it's a behavioral aspect this is how they is an action i would rather say behavior on action so it combined two things similar of course for everything how do you declare a class very simple uh, you declare a class uh, with a capital name you use a class keyword similar to javascript you also javascript exists the same manner same javascript the more latest this case so you have a class called fruit and you have a curly brackets uh, the, usually when you name a class you should name it capital and starting then it, when you create a class you must save this as a separate PHP file so this should be saved as the fruits the way I wrote the class name capital dot PHP okay uh -huh. sometimes sometime you may see like this fruits dot class.php just for yourself or the developer to know this is a class but that is not mandatory but what is mandatory is that you must you you can mix you can mix and match with the class file with other uh, 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 procedural uh, code it's not a problem but it's because it has a objective on its own it is a good idea that you keep it separate so you can reuse it in any application so usually you'll save it like a fruits capital and dot php if you write a small letter it's not gonna complain that's just a uh, you know standard we follow <clears throat> and it's among all the files it will immediately identify if you see these files have hundreds of different files they all similar so if you had a class you can easily not identify it by the capitalization of it so if it was a contact class, I would have said C capital. Mm -hmm. But as I said, you can make it a small letter. It's not a problem. But it is I mandatory. Sure. Refer, Tasha has a project, uh, pets. Then she needs the separate file, cats, dogs, or just pets. She can make it if she wants. If, she's, if she thinks that, oh, I will have a, a different uh, class assigned for them where I will have their uh, features uh, written um, and maybe you can. I don't know yet because uh, I'm thinking of like creating more from the like a human point of view. So I'm not right. sure I'm going yeah, to. No, no, don't need yeah. it. Don't need it. Mm -hmm. don't need it. Remember, if, 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 if only object related is the only frontier of the programming, then people would scrap mm -hmm. this procedural. A procedural programming is still the most used programming language in the world. Object oriented programming is only when you decide things goes complete object oriented. You could have a mix and match. Why are we learning it? Question is there. 
the learning is because uh, now that you may download some sorts of helper files or some sorts of files from internet or you've been working on a project they use a specific class to do all sorts of file upload thing or ajax things just as one or two or payment system they comes as a class they usually give it as a class so uh, so you need to know how to use it mm -hmm. now if i don't know how to uh, what is the syntax because it has a different syntax uh, then I, I will stuck Mm -hmm. I won't be able to take advantage of that. If you go to php.net, you'll see every day hundreds of classes being uploaded to submitted to them. They have a, um, a word as well. Uh, sorry, the word, the class, uh, you know, every week or now and then. You can subscribe for it. It will send you every time a class published. And, and they will tell you why this class is. One class is dedicated just to do a payroll. <clears throat> you can use it to do a generic payroll, a generic booking class. <laughs> a booking class, a time management, timekeeper class, an API to read your camera's pictures, a class, simple class been created. But once you implement and call few functions, you're ready. You literally without knowing the implementation of complexity of so camera. So basically, the class will take on what normally application would do. Yes, yes, in a micro level. That's correct. In a micro level, mm -hmm. and the application is the whole thing is because this is an application. What are you looking at? Mm -hmm. um, but then a class is a micro level solving one problem. You can use them with the procedure. Done. All you have to do is link it, call that function. If somebody oh. already made it, you can use it. So, if I co understand it correctly, so let's say we've got an application for payment. Mm -hmm. So I could have a class of sub uh, submitting the card details that's correct class? that's correct that's correct that's absolutely correct yes mm -hmm. that would be great in fact all, all all the all the payment system use classes mm -hmm. uh, because they are because if this is only people go with the classes when you that is secure and you know it takes time to perfect the class um so you can use it and you can just use that to validate credit card or any source of cards imagine how many types of cards they have covered all sorts of card possible. Mm -hmm. So why not, would you create it again? Of course not. You're going to take that and use the function written for Visa card validation. Use the oh, function for okay. MasterCard validation. So without knowing the class, you won't be able to use them. That is why we, we are learning how to use mm -hmm. them. Not that we'll be building an application of the class. Uh, if you sh should choose, of course you can. It's gonna cost, it's gonna be costly. But it, as I said, we just need to know mm -hmm. uh, how, how, what is the syntax of it, how I can use it. That's, that's the main thing uh, and the concept behind it. You, how, for example, this code. So this is something you never saw before, maybe you saw earlier, mm -hmm. is to familiar with the concept of it. So it is easier to some of the function, some of the application, only written in object related programming. One of them is mobile application development. Mobile application development only written in ob object-oriented program. Whether you use, you use Java or Kotlin, C Sharp, they all classes. Any application uh, you start with, uh, you can also do procedural, but all, all the uh, mobile application are written in object-oriented classes. So even though you learn this, you learn that too. You'll understand what that means. Because it's the same. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's why it is good yeah, if you have different, different ideas yeah. you don't yeah. 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 try out different yeah. things to at least have some idea of class. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's what we are trying to understand here. Yeah. So as you can see, the first one is class fruit. Uh, at the moment, imagine that you, you, you're learning it. So in case you come across this, you're not going to be completely uh, lost how to use this. Mm -hmm. I have a lovely class. Uh, that does the job. Uh, it saves a lot of my time as well. Uh, if I build one of those complex file upload system that I use with Ajax, it's actually a class I have downloaded and it's manipulated it a little bit. And I wouldn't be able to manipulate it if I had no idea how to read it. So, um, the, so as you can see, if you, if you create a very basic class, it looks like this. And this concept is similar to it or all, all other of same keywords, same things. They are public, we have public, everything. The class fruit in this case, you written in capital. If it is two word, however, then 
you do something called capital case. Capital case means the first letter, the first word of the letter, first letter, sorry, first letter of the first word would be capitalized. Mm -hmm. Let's say, let's say if it is called my fruit, then M will be capitalized, Y will be small, and the fruit will be F will be capitalized. It's called, cap, um, it's not camel case, and camel case start with small, this is called sentence case. Mm -hmm. or capitalized uh, so it will be my fruits or green fruits for example g g r w -E n if it is let's say for some reason i'm calling it green fruit mm -hmm. uh, so so we're not going to use underscore or anything the concept is you have to use um, like this let me show you if it is for some reason that we decided to work class name then it should be like this Oh, so both words are capital. Both words are capitals, right. yeah. Okay. That, that would be that would be the class name. No no underscore, no space. It will be the class name. And you save it like it on the HP like this. Mm -hmm. And then you can you must include it in order to use it. But this is how you should be saved. If it's mm -hmm. two words. Okay. And so in here we have only one word and then Bunch of things that we call in class, we call them properties, and bunch of things we call methods. Okay, mm -hmm. class has these two things. Uh, um, properties are some, just like a variable. You saw the variable. If you ignore the public word, these are nothing but a variable which hold a linear data, a name such as Sam, for example, a color maybe, you know, brown. Mm -hmm. So is these are some variables. <clears throat> these are Called properties, mm -hmm. and then you will have a bunch of classes that you use. Sorry, bunch of methods or functions that you use to manipulate or set or get the value out of this variable. This is how it's been set up. The whole situation is set up like this. The functions are there to work on them. That's to save them from external influences. So external, anyone external using this class, they will have to use methods in order to manipulate them, not directly. Mm -hmm. They should not be used directly. Even though, of course, that's, even though you see this is public, written public, they sh by making it public, I'll come back to another uh, discussion on public, private things later on. Mm -hmm. But um, if you do public them, anyone else from outside world can directly change the value of them which is dangerous for a class that's why you would never see many of them written public mm -hmm. very rare it will be public it will be always private that's the guideline that mm -hmm. you, you, you make sure you keep them private and make this public so how do I know this is a public they should have added the word public but if they don't add the word public by default, they are public function, which means from outside world, I can directly call this function. Now, when I say outside world, I will tell you what, what is it. Mm -hmm. Outside world means when you are about to create object out of this, that's the outside world, because we are not doing anything inside the class. So these are templates. They usually don't hold any data. They are initiated. Data has been passed to them using this function as you can see it's set name the mm -hmm. set name function the objective is only one objective to set the name mm -hmm. for this variable because it's a recipe it's a, it's a template ideally they should not have any value they will have a template like this. so yes you can have a value once you choose a purpose for that if you're making it generic you would keep them empty and let people do but there will be a lot of other functions as well so a class usually consists of two things property group of properties or variables and a group of methods or functions now you may interchange here interchange methods and functions well uh, <clears throat> when you talk about a class when you talk about a function in a class remember in a class we programmers usually call it methods they don't call it class uh, functions mm -hmm. they are same thing look function written with the word function and mm -hmm. the name 
a function. They're functions. In procedural, we call them functions, no problem. But it's become a norm. That's what makes this different between paradigm. When you say method, ideally, it should be, you think of, oh, this is a function written within a class. Does it make sense? Yes, but it's going to be confusing with the other methods which we had earlier, no? Uh, those what method you talk about? Exactly. So that is why now on, when we say method, uh, please use that set name. You then you resume. You're talking about a, a okay. function okay. that is mm -hmm. written inside a class. Okay. That's ideally the same. Only to differentiate among the when programmer talks or communicates uh, if I say to him oh I use the set name methods even though you don't mentioning the class name proofs mm -hmm. he should initially think ah I see so that means he's talking about one of the function from the fruit class <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> this is this is a grammar this okay and pro when they have say properties we don't uh, earlier we used to call them variable is it not mm -hmm. we call them variable in this case uh, the concept the new grammar is properties use the name properties use the color properties then you know they're talking about object oriented language okay but often even though for our functional programming if somebody a method we don't mind because we know what he means but that should not be the case uh, you must use appropriate, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, wording for it. That's it. It's just a word difference to tell them this is also a function, but it is belongs to a class. That's why it's called methods. It doesn't call function directly. So uh, here is a very basic class of it, and it has declared two variables called name and color, and you have two methods. Uh, the job of this. Uh, single method here you see two methods here to set the name value and this to get the name value so for each of these variable the concept is you should have pair of setter and getter these functions are called setter and getter one's job is to set the value to this variable mm -hmm. one's job is to get the value out mm -hmm. of so that's why the, the, this concept is called setter and getter method. For each variable, uh, you should have a bunch of set and get value, setter and getter. In this case, we do not have anything for color, but we have for name. So that's a basic class. And uh, how to use it? Let's have a look. Here is an example of it. <clears throat> Here is an example of it. Let's see if I am going to quickly grab it and then. Oh, I can try it here. Is it okay if I try it here? Uh -huh. it. So you don't have to copy paste or anything. It's just a pretty basic idea of class. As you can see, they are really simple. You declare two variables, you have a method called set name, uh, which will set the name of this mm -hmm. variable. Now interesting part of you here you'll see often this thing this mm -hmm. which is you not completely unfamiliar remember you, you use mm -hmm. that this in JavaScript when you have a password uh, visibility little thing uh, in the sign up sign in page remember and when you click it says this so this refer to the class itself to this the fruit, or, basically, to the yeah. fruit. that's correct. That's mm -hmm. absolutely correct. Because all of this property belongs to actually fruits. Mm -hmm. If I don't write the word this, it will be a mistake. Mm -hmm. That's because this is like a global for this function. Remember, mm -hmm. this is outside. Now, if I do like this, what it means is become a local variable. Mm -hmm. This became a local variable. So this name is different than this name. So that's been could be mind-boggling first time. Uh -huh. but it's absolutely fine. Uh, 
I say I just removed the this keyword from here mm -hmm. and made it like this. What is happening is in this case the function will create a local variable because when I say local, can you see the boundary of the function? Mm -hmm. yeah. And you, you already know what is a local variable, what is a global variable. Mm -hmm. Anything that you declare within a function become a local variable if it is not declared before. Okay. So this is a local variable. So even though they're exactly the same name, but they're two variables consider as a two variable. To refer to this, you must this is a this is a uh, class you must use dollar sign and this mm -hmm. followed by an arrow mm -hmm. single arrow not double arrow and then the name of the variable but this time you must not use the dollar sign for that first few times it will you do a lot of mistakes to understand this mm -hmm. but you'll get used to this so basically what is happening you ship you ship shift the dollar sign from here which is normally when you write a variable in java you should be writing dollar sign before you don't do mm -hmm. uh, but when you when you refer to a class property a property of the class itself uh, you, you have to do like this you have to refer using dollar sign these okay mm -hmm. and then a little arrow and the name which means this which means now pointing to global, mm -hmm. global object in this case. Yeah, this is the concept you have to use for every programming language. Uh, because the name variable belongs to whom, actually? Is it belongs to this function or is it belongs to fruits? To fruits. Excellent. That's why, and at this referred to whom? To, to fruits as well. That's correct. That's correct. The notation, grammatical, syntactical notation is this. You have to use the dollar sign this, followed by uh, not dot, not uh, curly bracket or anything, and mm -hmm. arrow, and then the name of the variable. <clears throat> so once you do this, let's create a new fruit. How do we create a new fruit? It could be so. This is a concept of a very basic fruit now, which contains a name. Very simple. So to create a new fruit, uh, you have to use the word new. Mm -hmm. Uh, now we are about to create some variable uh, or object these are called objects here and when I said earlier outside world this is all outside world mm -hmm. can you guess why well it's outside to the function <laughs> exactly it is as simple as that <laughs> because it's outside the class that's why it's called outside uh, outsider this is what we call this function is from outside the class bracket circle the outside okay so to create an object you must be outside of the class not inside the class and the bracket finishes here end of class is here mm -hmm. definition this is the definition of the class okay so the first thing you do you declare you give it a name whatever you call it object of course, this case we're creating an apple object so create apple equals to new fruits now the new is a built-in keyword for any programming language any any object in the program mm -hmm. all programming lang uh, uh, language that uh, supports object orientation they use new to create an object out of mm -hmm. the name, followed by the class name with a bracket round bracket now this is interesting if you look carefully, when you started the class, we had a curly bracket, right? Mm -hmm. That's not a round bracket. Unlike a function, function does round brackets, right? But the class actually starts as a curly bracket. Mm -hmm. But when you're about to create an object, you have to use a pair of curly bracket. Yes. Uh, sorry, round bracket. Yeah, they, they couldn't make it more complicated. Then you get used to it. It's a new language. It's like think like you're learning Chinese Chinese now, uh, Mandarin. But you get used to. Trust me, everybody gets used to it. Even even if you forget, all you have to do come back and check it out. That's it. Is the concept is man. So other thing you get used to. How many times do you know I have forgotten this? Many times. When I was writing classes, many times I forgot dollar sign to put here, I usually put here accidentally. Uh, 
and who'll tell you? Subrata. So when we do this variable apple uh, equals to new fruit, basically what have like a new let's say object in the fruit but we still don't know what is that apple yes because i could That's do right. apple set let's say weight not name yes okay okay yeah i can do set name i, I can do set weight i can do or set, set color. color yeah okay like, of okay course, of course. so first I we can. create just the entity and then entity. we, we decide what it is actually name or color or something color like that. Or yes? whatever you want to change mm -hmm. its property to what property you want to set so you write first you create the instance uh, mm -hmm. or, or what did you cast you just used a fantastic word for it you said uh, first you create the entity yeah that's correct mm -hmm. or instance first we create the entity let's get rid of the banana thing for now so just keep mm -hmm. one so it makes sense so that's that's pretty, i'm just creating one object so this case basically i'm saying i'm creating a new object or entity or instance mm -hmm. now that i have that so when you do these new fruits apple fun, apple objects now you can think of have access to this all mm -hmm. it has access to all public functions so because it has access to because it belongs to this you see fruits, mm -hmm. this object of fruits so ideally it will have uh the whatever region in the fruits, right? Including mm -hmm. the set name function. It inherits automatically. It inherits automatically. Uh, so, so that's it. A, a recipe of an apple pie, no matter how many different ways you make it, always going to be end up with an apple pie, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so fruits is a fruits. <laughs> so it may be slightly soury, maybe slightly sweet. Uh, if it is too change, then it's not apple pie anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's the idea of individuality. So you create an entity, then you decided to set the name of it, right? So basically, a, okay. So first you need to, in the class, first you need to give the list of the properties, yes? That's right. Only, that's only, right. Only, uh, then you can use them. Then yeah? you can use mm -hmm. that's right. At the moment I have the property color, but I don't have any function for it. Mm -hmm. Just that the color. Oh, so have. you cannot, despite having the property, no. you cannot actually assign it, yes? Because no, you I don't have a function. I don't have any function. I don't have any function. To be honest, uh, that is also a question. Because it's public, I could directly change it. But as I said, this should be private, let us say. Technically, this should be private. Mm -hmm. So that case, but for now, assume that we're going to try with the public. So you mean that for each of these, you should have another copy of this guy. Mm -hmm. so to set the color, for example. Mm -hmm. So this case, set name uh, is still same function name. Can you see? Mm -hmm. Set name, but I'm gonna change this to color. Yeah. Color. That's it. Set color, and of course, this will be the color. Mm -hmm. And this would be the color. This should be the color. So now I have a a function that will allow me to set the color. Same goes for this guy. Let's copy this. Mm -hmm. Get the color. Let's paste it here. And of course, uh, uh, get the color. This is gonna return. So if you look at this, uh, what we did here is very simple. With the <coughs> with the set color function, you set it. Mm -hmm. you set the name. That's why you have to pass something for it, right? You mm -hmm. need, to, need to give it because that's a parameter it takes. If you look carefully, that's it takes a parameter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's it needs something that you must provide so it can set the name, right? Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Very simple. So with the set, you, you pass whatever name. See, if I say banana, for example, that means it become banana, right? Then obviously, it, I have to change it to banana as well. Banana. Okay, that's fine. Okay. So now it is a banana, right? So I'm going to change it to all banana, for example. It doesn't matter what I do. Mm 
So I have set the name banana. Now I want to get the name. To get the name, you don't have to provide anything because you're getting it, mm -hmm. printing it. So that's the get name. Mm -hmm. What this does, while this sets, sets the value, this returns the value. Then mm -hmm. you already know what is the return. Mm -hmm. So if you call this function, uh, then it's going to give you the name of the mm -hmm. fruits. So that's pretty much it. It's, it says get name. Okay. I'm just going to get rid of this guy. Yeah. So yeah, if I run it, I sh if I haven't done mistakes, it should uh, give me something. Banana. Mm -hmm. I can do that for uh, to set the color, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, to like uh, set color. Color. Mm -hmm. uh, I can do yellow. Mm -hmm. Then obviously I can also say uh, uh, just give me a little bit of the color. Now, of course, when you refer to it, you also use this guy, remember? Mm -hmm. uh, the, for object-oriented, you'll be seeing uh, this a lot. Uh, so if I, if I do this, of course, I should be, if I've done right, then, yeah. Mm -hmm. that's, that's pretty much a, col uh, a, a concept of a class and how to use it. And now you can create as many, as many proofs with different variants of color. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, not a problem so, because it knows what to do. Obviously, this one doesn't have a particular reason, like concrete reason mm -hmm. for our example. Mm -hmm. This is just to teach. Uh, but as you can see, this is how we access mm -hmm. the different properties of, of classes. I, uh, uh, when, when mm -hmm. you want to create it. There might be other functions. Apart from set and get function, there will be different things, validation. You may you may wonder how can if it is a if it is a, a person class for example, I want to set a few things. I want to set the first name, last name, email, password. Mm -hmm. Imagine our registration. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I'll give you a little bit of homework if you want to try. Why don't you create a a class? Yes. Mm -hmm called person or, or, or register, let's call it register class. Register class. With yeah. four properties. Uh, one is uh, first name, last name, email, password. Mm -hmm. And you, you will create three instances, three, three users. Uh, user one, user two, user three, mm -hmm. with three different names, three set of password, three set of email okay yeah is it, is it possible mm -hmm. yep. all you have to do is just copy this save it as a uh, register.php okay and then compile it uh, is it okay class yeah because this is this is real th th these things that i'm doing here now this is actually happened to login and register let's say if you keep using login register, login register, login register why don't you make it a class and it will work of course, we're not going to do that for our entire thing, but if you should choose this is a good example of real real classes, right? Mm -hmm. This is just a fruits. Mm -hmm. We're not going to use it much. But why don't you try to create, a, you know, just give it a go, maybe okay. uh, 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 in, your, in your next class. Yeah, would you do that? Yeah. Just go ahead and try that. Mm -hmm. Just a little registration class with all these things that we did for registration. Okay. Okay then. I shall see you then the, on Thursday. Thursday. Thursday we'll talk a bit more about the extension if possible. But obviously I will try to